Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're out here fishing the mullet run today, South Florida. The sizzles are back here rigging up. We got Silent Frank. It's a little choppy out today. Darcy already caught a bunch of mullet. And uh, so we're trying to catch the tarpon and snook during the mullet run. Should be pretty exciting. Now, if you people. Somebody jump. Now, if you people who are jump. unfamiliar, Somebody the mullet jump. run is an annual migration of mullet and bait fish to come down the Jerks. east coast of Florida in the fall. And all kinds of predator fish, like Darcy likes to say, there you go. chase them. That's yours. <laughs> and that's so one. there's a lot of fish around oh. and easy to get bait. So that's what we're doing today. We're doing it off the beach today. It's going to be our last day to do it for a bit because of the weather. As you can see, the weather's starting to pick up today. You have anything to say, Sizzle? Yeah, we're just going to have to see what happens today. I'm excited that we find, we made it out, though. Got the opportunity to get on these fish. They're going crazy this morning. Yeah, they're jumping all over right here. We're going to get that someone out on film, hopefully, and see what we can do. I got a ton of shit on dropping the boat. Darcy and Frank are going to catch tarpon or snook or whatever else. The bluefish, jacks, barracuda, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Mine got eight. first fish of the morning. I'm not exactly sure what I've got. My mullet just started screaming out. But what Frank and I are doing are we're casting our mullet towards the giant mullet school with thousands of baits. We're trying to keep it on the outside edge, the boundaries of the school, so the actual big fish spot our, our mullet. So I'm hooked up. Hasn't jumped. It's not a tarpon. Find out what it is. Oh, and it broke. Let's we'll see what happened. My hook is here. All right, just gotta put out another one. He was on there for a while and my hook's not been out. Bummer. Hooked up. Oh gosh, I hope he stays on. We moved offshore, changed our locations here. We just weren't having a ton of lunk with the mullet run, which happens this time of the year, but it was still fun to see all those baits getting blown up, but just got hooked up on the bottom rod that's down a little deeper here. We've been on a drift now for quite a while and I just have mullet today that I caught in the cast net. So this fish is coming up. Took a little bit of a run there. It seems like he's swimming to the boat. Uh-oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm good. We're wrapping on that line. Damn it. That's exactly what I knew was gonna happen. What happened? King just popped off, ran over this second top line, and two lines crossing like that just pulled hooks right out of his mouth. All right, guys, here's time for the pudding update. These two goofballs haven't caught any fish except mullet this morning. So guess what we're having for dinner tonight? You guessed it, smoked mullet. Every time we have this mullet run, everyone talks about these smoked mullet, and so I guess we're going to try it, unless these guys catch a better fish. Or maybe we'll do the mullet anyway. You know, mullet is like a delicacy, particularly in like Northwest Florida. You smoke it. We'll make some delicious dip out of it and, and just try it. It's a real Florida hillbilly thing or redneck thing. And of course, we know Darcy is the born and raised, so. Sizzle, you ever, ever had mullet before? No, I have not. She has not. But you used to eat all kinds of things with your dad, right? You ate like uh, turtle and barracudas, frog legs. Never had turtle, but I have had frog legs, yes. Looked up on the bottom once again. Seems like it's the only rods that are producing today are the down lines. But it's been a little tough out here. A grunt, maybe? Oh, it's a shark. Is it? It's a freaking shark. Woo! Not sure what kind of shark that is. Oh, he's spitting up. Oh, he just spit it right out. Look at that. He wasn't even hooked. <laughs> he literally just had it in his mouth. And he's like, I'm barfing it up on your boat. <laughs> Pretty funny. I think that might be like an Atlantic sharp nose. I'm not 100%. Well, I'll let him calm down for a second and let him go. He's coming for my foot. So he's he coming for my foot. He wants to eat you. He wants to eat you. He is totally coming for me. He wants to eat you. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding anymore. <laughs> come on. How can he walk like that? That's pretty wild. He's walking. Stop, stop, stop. 
All right, so like I said, not 100% sure on this species. Maybe if you guys know, go ahead and comment below, but it might be some type of Atlantic sharp nose. I believe it's a species that doesn't get very big, but here we go. Get that fish. Get up here, stay hooked. That was a really weird bite. There's just some weird bites going on today. I don't know if it has to do with the current or what's going on down there on the bottom of the ocean, but catching that shark was not a good sign to me. But at the same time, it is a good sign because we got a fish or a shark, but this might be something good. I don't know. Yeah, you can just hold it. Yeah, you can lead around, I guess. Frank. Flip them in. He is a little bigger. Slightly bigger. Must be his twin sister. There's that shark. I must eat my snapper. I'm actually not really sure what it is. Hooked up. Shark, I see a shark. He's swimming towards my fish. It's a shark! Oh my god. How do you catch three sharks in a row bottom fishing? I mean, it's pretty crazy. I'm not even using a wire trace right now. So three exactly the same species, back to back to back to back. And I got one right here. He's trying to eat the weight. Oh my gosh, stop it. These sharks are so hungry today. He was just trying to hit this weight in the water. That is crazy. Make sure it doesn't get Brian's toes. One, two, three. Woo! Relax, relax. All right, we're done. We are back at the house, guys. Made it back and it's super windy. The seas have picked up out there like crazy. So it was good to get out there while we could, but I caught all those mullet. And then after catching those three sharks, I was just like, I'm done fishing. That's it. That's not a good sign for me. And the water quality is still pretty crappy out there just from the Hurricane Dorian and all the fresh water dumping that they've been doing. So it's been tough, but we got mullet when that's what counts. So in my grizzly cooler, you got a big old mullet, also known as a striped mullet. And I heard there's, I read actually, that there's over 80 different species of mullet in the world, which is pretty wild. But this is our standard striped mullet or black mullet, I guess you would call it. Um, they don't have like a dot below the pectoral fin here. And the, 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 there's other versions of mullet that get much bigger than this particular species. But this is a species that migrates all the way down the Atlantic coast side and they go through the Florida Keys and then they go way offshore to spawn. So it's pretty cool to catch all, the, all of them during the mullet run. Today, we're gonna be smoking them. And I'm using my Smith's Consumer Products four inch bait breaker knife, which has anti salt, salt water anti-corrosion coating on the blade, pretty sweet. And it's just short and perfect to lay up mullet. So let's do this. I am going to be butterflying mullet today. So how we're gonna start is I'm gonna make a cut right here, just like so. And then I'm literally just gonna rip it back, pull it back, just like that. And then we're gonna slice that off. And a sharp, sharp blade is gonna get the job done here. And this is a fairly inexpensive knife for you all to check out. And I'll link it down in the description below in my Amazon store. So now that we removed that, you can see the collar is still attached on either side here. The next step of what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cut right here. And then I'm just gonna fillet off this angle fin. Just like that, got rid of that. Now the next step is to, we're gonna remove the actual spine bone on the fish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a cut on this side and just run the knife all the way down. And mullet have a lot of scales. Reason being is because they're vegetarians. So they're on the bottom feeding on algae and um, decaying matter. So they have big scales to protect them while they're down there foraging. So now that I made that cut, I'm just following the backbone. And then up here by the head, of course, they have a bunch of spine bones. Try to go over those and rib cage bones, like that. And then the most important step here, so now that I made that cut, that initial cut, you can see here, you don't wanna actually cut through to the other side of the mullet because we're just gonna butterfly them open. So now that I've mostly got that side off, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. So I'm gonna slice off the meat, the other side of the filet off of the backbone again, the spine bone. 
follow it down. The sharp knife is important because, like I said, they have so many tough scales. And then same thing. Break through. And then up here by the head. Just want to break through those bones. Also trying to keep some intact, but we'll see how this goes. Okay. All right, so now I should be able to just pull the spine bone right out. There you go. Just remove the spine on both sides. We're gonna open them up. And there you can see all the innards, which should be pretty easy to remove. Let's take my hands, rip it out. And there you go. There is a butterfly mullet with the spine bones removed. And most of the, the bones are gone by the rib cage here as well, but I do feel them. Um, so we're just going to leave that in, though, when we go to smoke our mullet. And you can see this black lining. Um, and like I said, they are vegetarian. So honestly, if you just scrape it, it kind of comes right off. And I'll clean them up in a bucket of salt water. I know a lot of you guys, if you've seen my Cast Clean Cook videos, I usually have a bucket of salt water with me to clean off fish. I don't recommend using um, fresh water when you clean off your salt water fish. And it, reason being, it has to do with osmosis. Um, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know the exact reason, but use salt water, it'll make a difference on your fish. And fresh water will actually just make the fish It'll, the, the cells of the fish will actually absorb all that fresh water and it just won't, just won't taste as good. So you can see I just cleaned them up pretty nice right there. Scrubbing it down. There we go. He's gonna be laid flat like that. I have about five more mullet to do, just like this one. And then I'm gonna meet you back in the house to prepare them for the salt, for the brine that we're gonna soak them in before going on the smoker. Made it back in the house. I'm a little bit of a rush today. We just have a lot going on. We're trying to get this video up for you guys. And on top of that, we got a, a business meeting coming up in less than an hour and I'm nowhere near ready. So I'm just gonna try to knock this out, but I've got all my ingredients here laid out of what we're gonna do. I have a gallon of spring water here and my Tupperware that I'm just gonna pour it right in here. And I always say a gallon is a good, a good way to start with brining fish, whether it's a pound of fish or five pounds of fish but I ended up weighing the mullet that I have and it weighs two and a half pounds. So this should be more than enough. Now for the brine, the most important parts are salt and sugar. This is kosher salt, one cup. Now I've got one cup of well-packed light brown sugar. Ooh. Okay, got that in there. I'm also going to add two teaspoons of pickled capers, just capers from Publix. And then I'm gonna mix this up. It is time to add our mullet fillets to it. And I would say that a gallon of water is a good amount, whether you have one pound of fish or five pounds of fish. I weighed my mullet and I have about two and a half pounds of mullet fillets here. But the reason for brining fish, the, there's two reasons, to disinfect it and also to draw the water out of the meat. And then it also creates like a texture on top of the fish that the smoke adheres to, and that's what gives it its smoky flavor. So brining fish is important. All right, all the, all the fish is submerged. And last step here is I'm gonna add some lemon wedges that we have already pre-cut. And this is probably a simple brine, but your brine is totally up to you and your preference if you like sour brine or, or spicy brine or even sweet brine. And the brine, it really just depends how long you want it to soak. You can do half an hour up to six hours, eight hours. It's kind of your preference. And I heard the longer that it soaks in your brine, the, the more salty it will get. It'll, it'll, it'll suck in all that kosher salt that's in the brine. So we're probably going to do it about two hours. Okay, our fish has been brining now about three hours. We just got done with our meeting or else I would have done it like two hours. But oh well, it is what it is. So I'm taking it under the sink. Just going to rinse it off. But now I'm just going to pat dry it. And then we're gonna stick it in the fridge for 
I would say, I don't know, an hour, maybe a little longer, just depending on how dry it gets. It needs to get dry so we can put it on the smoker. All right, Darcy, so it's time to try our fish. Let's do it. <laughs> well, as usual, I've already had a whole bunch of it. So I'm not gonna say anything yet, but Darcyzzle, why don't you try that smoke mo? All right, let's go. Brian thinks it's gonna be a little too spicy for me. It might be, we put a lot of pepper in Old Bay on there. Uh, and these, it's actually in the morning, it got really late last night when we were filming, and we're actually drinking our coffee out of our grizzly cups while we eat mullet. I'm not sure that's a good combination, but. <laughs> Oh no, Melody's here. Uh -oh. Darn. Trouble. She's left now. Yep. Darcy always worries about the mail lady because she sends out these bracelets. I'm working on orders and always so sending many orders. out bracelets. But... So check those out. Yeah. It's but really I... good. Sorry, I'm caught up talking Go about Go ahead, mail lady. dive in. Is it good? Mm-hmm. It's really, listen guys. You know, I'm everyone... not joking. Honestly, I even like it's did a delicious. poll on Instagram and like, 60% of you have never tried mullet, period, and a lot of you think it's so gross. It's amazing. I know, it's really, really good, good, dude. Look how, I, Super I, white. I took some B-roll. Look how white this meat is. Now, you know, just the other day, we smoked kingfish. This is way better. King, I'm eating this on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah, he thought that he didn't think the kingfish was that good when after he tried this mullet. No, I thought fan. the kingfish was pretty good. That, um, no, it came in good and he put it in the dip, but I, would, I wouldn't, like this is way better than kingfish like just smoked regular. Really good. Look how the meat is so white. I mean, I showed you in the B-roll, but. Yeah, and I'm also glad that I removed that black, like stomach lining in that area too, which I heard tastes like crap. So I'm glad that I did that and, and uh, prepared the mullet correctly. It is amazing. Mm. So good. So be a real redneck. Go out there and catch some mullet. Smoke them up. Mm -hmm. You can also fry it. Some people put it in the pan, it's crazy. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. All the information that you're gonna need is in the description below. Please check that out. And until our next adventure, follow, follow your, your dreams, dreams and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. This is a great breakfast. <laughs> it's delicious.